supposed to do is to create a page on your blog and you're going to call it forms quiz and you're going to use a two column layout for your page and then by flip teaching model what that means is that you know as teachers we tend to stand up in front of the room and we tell students a whole bunch of information that they could get a whole bunch of different ways they could read a book they can read a handout they can watch a video usually most popular is to watch a video so basically they watch the teaching try and keep your video short and then you want to have some sort of accountability piece of, of them demonstrating comprehension that they watched the video or read the assignment. So um, what you're going to do is you're going to go to YouTube, you're going to find some video on YouTube, get the link to YouTube, and you're going to go insert video, YouTube, paste the link to the YouTube video so it embeds that YouTube video on the left side of your Google form or your, your page, the two column layout on your blog. Then on the right hand side you're going to make a form. And so what you want to do is you want to make sure that you ask for the student's name and email. Now you want to do that at the bottom. I'm just giving you a recommendation because that way the first thing they see is the questions they need to answer. Then down at the bottom they can put in all their personal information. Um, but the questions should not be critical thinking type questions. It should be things they could absolutely answer without your help. If they watched the video, if they read the text, they should be able to answer the questions without your help. I would like your quiz to have at least four different question types. And then if you're using the new forms, um, you want to have you're going to select that they go to a new spreadsheet. And um, so then you're just going to be able to insert your Google form right into your blog page on the right hand side. Now you want to actually fill it out several times so that you can get some data. So you just want to Fill it out at least eight times. It can just be you, so you just pretend you're eight different students. Now if you go to your spreadsheet in Google Drive, um, you're going to find the, the responses, and so you can kind of look at how everybody answered. I have some tricks with how you can have it automatically grade or send feedback, but that's not part of this assignment. Uh, make sure you share the spreadsheet so that we can see the data. And then in your, in your blog post, you want to link back to the spreadsheet so I can see both the form and the spreadsheet. So let's go ahead and make a form. I go to Google Drive and I click on create. I'm going to create a form. So click on the create button, create a form. It pops up and I'm just going to call this my Google form quiz. And just a little note to myself, I want to delete this later. And then you can pick which theme you want. If you want to have a theme personally, um, I'm going to do some fish here. I, it's fun to do themes, but after a while I just make them all plain. It really is more distracting than it is helpful. So what was my learning about, um, let's say I had done on shapes. So what is a shape with three sides? So. I can just go ahead and start typing the question. You'll notice here I have this drop down box. I can choose the question type. So do I want them to write triangle? Um, maybe, maybe not. But if they do triangle, will they spell it correctly? I kind of like to have all my students have their answers in the same. So in that case, you might want to do multiple choice. So square, line, triangle, circle, hexagon. So just give them the choices. I would recommend that you make the questions required. And that way they can't skip anything. I'm going to hit done. And I'm going to add an item. Now you notice this little drop down arrow next to this. I can choose different question types. So I did a multiple choice. Now so let's do a text. Um, name something that is in the shape of a cylinder. So just knowing that they understand what a cylinder is, so you might say they might say a Coke can or um, a grain silo. And so in this case, it's not something I'm looking for a very specific answer, so I think a text box would probably be good for that. And I'm going to give them some help text. Now the help text does not show up in the spreadsheet, but it's just extra things to give them a hint on how to answer. So think of something in your house or that you have seen that is in a cylinder shape. So just give them a little help. 
And then down here, see the required question? I want to make sure that I checkbox that. I usually like to make all my questions required, and there are sometimes reasons why I don't. So I did a text box. Maybe I'll do paragraph text. Describe something your mom cooks that has lots of different shapes. So I'm, I want them to kind of write me a, a little story. So I'm going to want a longer answer. So I don't want this paragraph text. Again, I'm going to require the question. And it's the only difference between text and paragraph text is the side of the box. Otherwise, they're exactly the same. I can actually, in this little tiny box, I can put a whole essay in there. I'm going to add an item. I'm going to click on the little arrow next to this so that I can choose a different question type. I have text, I have paragraph text, and I have multiple choice check boxes. Which of the following shapes have straight sides? So in this case, what it allows them to do is choose more than one. So check boxes, I can have triangle, square, circle, sphere, um, arrow, whatever it is. And so um, rectangle, hexagon. I'm going to require that. So in this case, they could check triangle and square and rectangle and hexagon. All right, so then again, I'm going to click on the little drop-down arrow. Choose from a list. Choose your favorite shape. All right, so I'll do a circle, square, um, triangle, diamond. I'll require this question. So you'll notice that happens in that case is they're going to actually end up getting a drop-down list. It doesn't show up in the editing view. And then the scale one would be rate how much you learn from the video. Um, it's just on a scale of one to five, one being nothing, five being a super lot. And I can change the scale so it goes up to 10 or even that it would start at zero. I'm going to require that question. Then you see that I can ask the question type just asking them to, well, rate something, um, do it on a scale. And then the last question type in here is a grid. Now that is something I use for rubric scoring. I'll just do a grid really quick. Um, rate your project you turned in. It probably doesn't make sense to do a grid usually for um, this particular assignment. I'm just showing you really quick how you can do a grid type problem. So in their project they probably had um, neatness, Grammar, um, use of nouns, this is a nouns project, um, or whatever your criteria are. And then in my columns, it's a rubric, so if it's a three point rubric, three, excellent, two, average, average, one, poor, zero, didn't do it, I'm going to require that question. So for your quiz, you only need four different question types. I did one of each question type. Um, but that would allow them to basically fill out a rubric. And then at the end, I need to ask them for what is your first name? Now I put that all in there in the question title. I'm actually going to move that to the help text. Because in the spreadsheet, whatever the question is, is what's in the column header. And so if it's like really long... Uh, you know, it's sometimes a little harder to, to manage. It's, that's just a hint. You can actually put in what is your first name. That just tends to be something that I do. So you'll notice the question is first, but in my help text, I'm actually expanding that out into a complete sentence. Add an item. Last. What is your last name? All right. And I want you to make sure... What is your email address? Make sure you ask for the email address and it needs to be required. So you'll see is I first last an email address down at the bottom of the quiz so that when they look at it, the first thing they see is the questions they need to answer so that it can help guide them through watching the video of what they're going to need to be on the lookout for when they watch the video. 
Down here at the confirmation page part, um, it says your responses have been submitted. If you wanted to have it say something else, like maybe directions. Right. Now that you have finished the quiz, go to the next station and work with a partner. Right, I can. Do I want them to be able to submit the quiz again? Yes or no? You can check box that check box. Do I want to show them the results? So after they submit the quiz, do I want them to have the answers? Probably not. Um, and sometimes you want to let them come back and edit their responses if they did that before, but they would have to sign in. So usually I, I leave all of these off. Um, unless I can think of some reason I want to let them submit it again. They can still submit it again. They just have to go back to the original place where they got the link. Okay, so once I do that, you'll notice mine right here says view responses. Um, I'm going to unlink the form, unlink. And so then you'll notice what it says. It says choose response destination. So most likely that's what yours says is right here, choose response destination. So I'm going to need to click on that. Now I checkboxed always create a new spreadsheet because I love spreadsheets. Um, if you didn't have that checkbox, you'd have to go to this response destination each time. So I have it created in a new spreadsheet for where the responses are. And I'm going to click Create. So then you'll notice that once it creates this spreadsheet, it's thinking, okay, it says View Responses. That's actually going to take me to the spreadsheet where the form goes in. I'm going to click here on View the Live Form. And you can see that I have my form here, so I can see how that goes. And I want to fill this out several times myself, right? I'm going to, something in the shape of a cylinder, Coke can. My mom makes spaghetti, spaghetti, it has lots of lines. And the mushrooms kind of look like a hexagon, I don't know. What shapes have straight sides? favorite shape. How am I going to rate this? Fill in the rubric. Fill in my personal information. Hit submit. There we go. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of that. And then I could view the live form and take it again. So that is the form. If I click on view responses, what you'll notice, here's the spreadsheet and it's got my answers in there that I already typed in. It's going to do it right away. So what I want to now do is, you see I go, go to the blue share button and it's private. You can tell that because of the padlock. I want to click on that and change it from being private to public on the web or anyone with the link. Now I wouldn't normally do that. I wouldn't share results of a quiz or with a survey usually publicly. I usually do leave that private, but you're turning this in to me. So I'm going to copy, you see this link right here? in the share. So I made it public and I'm copying the blue link and hit done. So when I go back to my Google site that has the video and the quiz, let me edit this, at the bottom down here underneath the form, I'm going to click here to see the spreadsheet. And I highlight the text. So click here. I click on the hyperlink up in the toolbar. Now don't forget you have to click on web address. Command V paste. Have it open in a new window. The other thing I can do when I go insert, and this is the actual spreadsheet. It's not the form, it's the spreadsheet. Insert the spreadsheet. When I check the checkbox, it's going to actually embed that whole spreadsheet right onto the page. Save. So what I should see then is your video, your, um, your Google form, and then the spreadsheet that goes with it. It's actually the wrong form. I need a different one. Change this one to be that one. All right, there. Now that one matches the one that I just made. And then here's the responses that go with it. So now people can go to the website, they can fill it out, and then they would be, you would be able to see the embedded spreadsheet.